So if you are new to this channel and you wanna find out more about when it's time to get an agent or get management as talent or even behind the camera or behind the scenes now, cause they also have reps as well too, make sure you stay tuned for this video. All right, y'all, I'm here submitting an audition. And I figure, you know, since I got my little corner set up and all of that jazz and I'm waiting to go eat, I would record the video for the next day right now. This is a, a very, very, very common question that I get a lot from people that honestly, I'm still figuring a lot of stuff out with, um, but I'm currently experiencing one part of it. So I'm just gonna kick it to y'all straight from my experience. Y'all know how I do on here. Uh, my name is Lauren LaRosa. I am a YouTuber, but most importantly, I work in entertainment. I am a television news reporter, or celebrity news reporter. I don't know if we call ourselves television news reporters anymore. I ain't like the local news. Yeah, okay, anyway. I am a reporter and producer. I currently work for TMZ, the celebrity news outlet. Um, and I've been at TMZ since 2016. I started as a tour guide. For those of you who are new here, if you're not new, you kind of know. All of this is on my YouTube channel. When I started, all that good stuff, even before then, when I first moved to LA. But I started as a tour guide. I did that for some time. Then moved to like a PA and then moved as like a PA on the news desk. And then eventually got offered a gig as a producer on the news desk. Over this last year, I recently signed with management. Uh, I came to LA knowing that I wanted a manager and an agent. I don't think I really knew what each one did. I don't think I knew how much each one was supposed to be paid. I just looked at people who were successful and I'm like, they have, um, sorry, cause I'm, I'm submitting an audition right now too. Then I didn't even tell my manager I was doing it at the time, I did it. But yeah, so, so I came here knowing like, okay, I want an agent, I want a manager because everybody I saw around me or, you know, like you see on TV and stuff like that, like people in Hollywood, everybody has the agent that they call and stuff like that. So I thought that you needed that to be successful. Once I got here and I realized like those people, your agent and your manager, they're taking money from you. Like not, not to say it like that, so hold on. Not that they're taking money from you, but if you have team members, team members have to be paid. So to me, as someone that was starting out, I took meetings with agents. I felt like if I wanted to, if, if in a new phase of like trying to get started in entertainment, I felt like if if a meeting or something presented itself, I was gonna try it, I was gonna do it. But once I learned that like they take like a 15 to 20% um, of your like, you know, the pay from the shows and stuff you're making, I'm like, yo, I'm too broke to pay anybody right now let me like you know get some experience under my belt and then i learned about the casting websites like actors access backstage all of that so i was on there and i was using social media too facebook whatever i could just to get gigs and i'm like i really can't afford to pay anybody who's helping me right now like i'm literally barely affording to live here so during that time i was like you know what i'm gonna use this time to get experience um use the resources i had and use this time to also like really understand what an agent and what a manager even do, what they are and when you need them. So from my experience, a manager basically helps you like declutter. So a manager will take everything that you have going on, who you are as a brand, what you wanna do, what resources you have, and really help you formulate a plan for success and stay on track with that plan for success and make sure that as things come up, you navigate them well, you navigate them correctly, you navigate them in a way that keeps you set for your end goal. Sometimes, depending on your relationship with your manager, a manager can also be a person bringing you jobs that help to push you along that line as well too, but that is not the manager's sole job. An agent, however, and I was always told in the beginning, if you have to choose between the two, go with an agent because agents bring you money as they take it versus managers don't always do that. I didn't end up getting either or right off the bat. You know, I my first signing was with the manager. So an agent is someone who kind of about the same, you know, they're gonna help you along that path. They're gonna help you create this plan for success. However, they have the relationships, they're in the conversations, they're in the rooms a lot more oftentimes, depending on your manager's background, um, where new jobs are being discussed, 
new shows are being talked about what certain cast and producers are looking for like their relationships are solely based on getting you higher and keeping you working because that's how they make their money the manager then will take what the agent is doing and help you guys as a team you all will then begin to structure so people ask me all the time when's the right time to get an agent when's the right time to get a manager i feel like honestly just like if I was a person just starting out and you feel like you need someone or you have both options on the table, I would go with, if you want to choose one, if you can go with both of that, should, everybody's story is different too. So this is also not a definitive answer or question because everybody's story is different. Like if you have the option right now to go with a manager and an agent at the same time and you really believe that that agent and that manager are, you know, invested in you. They are going to push you. They're going to prioritize your work and your brand and your growth. Go for it. Do what you think, you know, is best. Typically, the industry rate for a manager to take out of deals, they're going to act for 15 to 20 percent. That's typical. Um, another thing, too, that you also want to be really be for sure of, like, if, if you decide to go both, you want to make sure that if you're signing on both people and this is again from my experience and from what i now know that i want just from having a manager who i work very closely with i want my agent when they come into play now that i have a manager too to fit into this dynamic that we have like i want them to be able to have conversations without me i want us all to be able to work like granted they don't work for each other they all work for me but I want us all to be able to work as one. I don't want, you know, if me and my manager come up with a, print, a plan and a brand alignment and all that stuff, I don't want to have an agent who completely doesn't see it or see something else for me. So now I'm being pulled in different directions and it's not coherent, it's not sinking. That is important. The way that your brand resonates with people, and I keep saying brand even though we're talent because in the day and age of social media and like YouTube and all of that, all of this is branding. Like. When casting agents are going online and looking for black girls in LA or, or black women on camera in New York, I'm hoping I'm popping up because when I'm putting up videos, I'm hashtagging those locations because that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Those are my bases right now. The videos that they see when they see me, I want to make sure I'm, you know, talking about something that makes sense. Or if I'm having a good time, at least I'm showing my personality. Like it, everything is a part of a brand because it's always on. It's always go time. I want to make sure and for me if i have both a manager and an agent whether i'm heavy in the game or i'm newly starting that what i envision for myself even though that vision will change the more you do the more you're exposed to it will change what i envision for myself the manager and the agent both were all aligned like it all makes sense and i think that goes into like your faith as well too like a lot of this industry in la is all about like money 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 business 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 but I think for me, I've always done business based on like how I feel about things, you know, what my true end goal is, what the foundation that I'm trying to build is, but also to what my faith is. What is my spirit of discernment telling me? But my manager right now, me and her met through a job that I had when I was a TMZ tour guide. She never told me what she did, but I knew she was always doing something. She was always on the phone making calls and figuring problems out for people. And I was just like, okay. But I never really, like, you know, I didn't push. When she left my job, she was, like, super helpful. She was just a person I could call and ask questions to. She would throw jobs my way here and there. And we built that relationship where I trusted her as someone that I could go to with the truth in good situations and bad situations, but also as someone who was, like, honestly just trying to help me and wanted to see me grow and this was before she had any ties to me financially like none like i would book jobs and i get paid and that that's it like she's just trying to help me i noticed that about her and once i found out what she did which was working in the management space i was just like oh my god like you know it would be so dope to work with her but again i'm also really big on like relationships and things just flowing naturally like I didn't want to force it and that's another piece of advice I would give too is like you want things to be in alignment you want your team to all be on the same page but you don't want to have to force you don't want to have to force an agent to care about you you don't want to have to force a manager to care about you because I promise you they care about where their money's coming from no matter how much they care about you they care about where their money is coming from 
let me say that again. No matter how much they may seem like they care about you, they care about where the money is coming from because at the end of the day, this is all a business, period. With my manager, with anyone else's manager, that is one of the things that I would tell you guys to keep that in mind, okay? But at the same time, within your spirit of discernment, you know your goals, your vision, and what you want to align, you can choose people who you know and you can tell by having conversations and taking meetings are actually gonna, you know, be there for you and, and kind of actually care about you. Even if they can't care about you seven days of the week, at least one day you know you have some time or a few days out the week you know you have some time. And when you're in a city like a LA or New York or Atlanta or wherever, to be honest with you, that manager probably has about 10 to 12 other clients. That agent probably got about 20 to 30, depending on how big the agency is. But you have to, again, take the time to have conversations with these people prior to signing anything, getting to know these people, looking up their past work, looking up the companies they work with, the companies they're affiliated with, the talent that they've been working with prior to, what are they saying about them? Are they working? That was a big thing for me. Like with the manager that I work with now and the company she works for, one of the things that I realized, even though like I couldn't really find too much like reviews online, I had to have my own experience with her personally. So I kind of lucked up on that. But one of the things that I did realize when I went through their client roster was, it didn't matter how A1 or 1% their talent was, from the oldest talent to the newest talent, everybody was working. Whether it was something small or you know the network or the streaming platform was small, or it was something that they had produced and pitched and sold themselves, people were working. And it's very hard to be not 1%, especially in LA, and still be working. And that was important to me because I know how to, I'm learning, not that I know, I'm learning how this industry goes. And one of the most important things to me is right now making the money to actually afford to live because I'm lucky right now to have a consistent gig, but when I decide to step off and do other things, you literally are working for a few months and then it's, hey, what's coming next? What are we planning on next? What are we doing next? So to have, um, you know, management behind me that understands, nah, people gotta eat. You know what I mean? Like people gotta eat. I, that was important to me. No matter how big or how small the agency, really lean towards somebody that you feel like, that gives you the warmest vibes. And I don't mean warm, like don't get tricked. Cause everybody's warm when they want something from you. But I mean like, you know, really take time to figure out does this make sense for me? Is this person in my corner? Because the biggest thing that I learned in working with my manager, even from signing the contract, I remember it was so hard for like me to like read through the contract and be okay with certain things because a lot of it took trust. And I've been doing this by myself for a long time, like years. And to just trust somebody with everything that I've been working on, I'm like, uh, so I remember I had made edits to our contract and was basically asking like, hey, you know, y'all saying y'all want to do this on my behalf without even having to talk to me. Can we, you know, I, I, like, can we discuss that prior to? And if I'm not available, can it just hold until I am? Like, I wanted to kind of like micromanage. And I remember she came to me and was like, listen, I'm never going to do anything that blindsides you, where I put you in a position that you don't know. We will always discuss, we will always talk but I need you to trust me. I need you to trust that if I'm in a room having a conversation for you, I represent your best interest, period. You have to trust the people that are working for you because a lot of times they're going to be working for you. You're going to be doing the work and they'll be working for you. Now a big part of this too is, is like really realizing when it makes sense to even bring on people. Like when I first met her, it didn't make sense for me to have a manager. I didn't have anything to manage. Like. You know, I was a tour guide at TMZ. I was doing little spots here and there when I could find them, but I really didn't have anything to manage. It would have been cool to have her and, you know, have what, what she brings to the table. But to be honest with myself, looking back, even now, I feel like I'm still growing. Like, I know that I'm not the most busiest person on her roster, but things do come my way and I'm working. It didn't make sense at that time. I didn't really have anything to manage. So I think it would have been difficult. Actually, I remember, she actually had tried to have conversations with me, I believe, or conversations on my behalf with the management company she works for. And I don't think that they really like saw it yet. And I think, I don't know if it was maybe like, you know, I just was really green or whatever the case may be or they needed to meet me, but I wasn't ready at that time anyway. Like I wasn't ready to trust anybody. 
I didn't have enough going on. I didn't have enough exposure and experience to the industry either to even understand what her job was, where I needed her, why I needed to trust her and trust her expertise. And I don't think there's any way really like to, to be able to say to yourself, okay, now it's time for a manager. Because again, everybody's journey is different. I know people who've had managers since the very beginning and they still work with the same managers. Everybody's journey is different. But for me, I think she came right at the right time. And when I give people advice, I say, hey, look, get stuff to manage. Because you want to see, you want to see how they work. If you have a manager and they're not, man there's nothing to manage, you don't have anything going on. And it doesn't have to be the biggest of biggest. You don't have to be on network TV. You could have your own platform on Instagram that they're helping you manage. Just something. Just have something because you want to see how they work. You want to see how you guys work together. If you're not doing anything, there's no way to really tell them. And then like with an agent, again, I told y'all, I've been trying to get an agent since day one. I feel like, or at least I, I, you know, and this hasn't been my experience. I don't have an agent yet. I'm still looking for agents. Hey agents, I need y'all. And I'm currently on TV, so come get me. Come on over. I would have taken an agent day one because from my understanding of what an agent does, and I, I took a lot of meetings, but nothing came from it. I was even fishing with an agent at one point, which is where they don't sign you, but they kind of like throw you out there and see what they can cast and see what they can get for you. That was like, child, that started the whole burn girl grinding movement. He even told me he could give me book because I was dark skinned. He was honest with me though, but yeah. Management might not always see it from the beginning. Agencies might not always say it from the beginning, but Continue to do your work and get better at what you're doing. And once you get better at your message and your message resonating, it will do that. And it will attract who you need to attract for, you know, whatever that next level you need to be taken to in your journey is. And I think that's one thing that I knew or could convince myself of. Cause I think I knew it, but I couldn't convince myself of when I first moved to LA or like even in New York, like when I first just started working and, you know, being on camera and when I was in high school and college doing plays and stuff like, I felt like if it wasn't happening right now, it wasn't gonna happen. And that's not true. And I still get in that funk today, like literally. But I think looking at me now and looking at me then, I'm like, bro, you was not ready for a lot of stuff you thought you were. And even if you had gotten what you thought you were ready for, you would have had to learn and grow a lot the same way that you are now. Like you can't cheat the hustle. You cannot cheat your growth pattern, your journey, all that. You gotta go through it to get to it. Yeah, I turned 30 and like, Soon. So we're trying to vlog every day till 30. And uh, this is one of the things that was heavy on my mind because like I told you guys, I'm trying to get an agent in year 30. So I'll be back with that update. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Check out all my other videos, subscribe, comment, anything that helped you, anything you want to see from this content this month. Um, and tell a friend to tell a friend, Lauren LaRosa TV is where it's at. We are living and surviving LA and doing a little bit of New York here and there too now. Okay, a little sprinkle, a little sprinkle. I'm Lana Rosa, I'm tuning out and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Say that she like me, well baby, take baby steps, cool. Just play with the stick, yeah, like a fast, furious, yeah.